Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 53rd live stream geometry and we just had our fifth person pop on right now. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, if you want to join these sessions in the future, feel free to email me at mgreenb801 at gmail.com. Uh, they're at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. So today I'm going to be going over the USA PSTST again. So that's the selection test to determine who can take the IMO selection test. So this is like the, this is kind of like the semifinals for the US and then the TST is like the finals. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, give me just a second. All right. Oh, whoops. Uh, can you guys all see it? Um, I might be sharing my whole screen and not just the, the website. Hold on one sec. Let me stop sharing and reshare it again. Um, all right. Are you guys able to see this? Yeah. Okay. That's weird. Usually um, Zoom, like when you share it, it has like this thing around your screen, but it, it doesn't show it this time. All right, so we're gonna start off with a problem. This looks maybe a little easier, although I'm not sure. Um, so we have a triangle ABC uh, in a circle omega and H and O are the ortho center and the circumcenter. All right, let me use this to draw the ortho center. Um, should be triangle center four. And O, we can just use this tool to do that. And M and N are the midpoints of A, B, and A, C. Um, let me try this out. I've never done it like this before. But yeah, that's, then I don't have to rename it when I, okay. So MH and NH meet the circle at P, raise MH and NH. So that's kind of important. So not just the line MH, but the, we want to know what side it intersects the circle on. Um, so they meet the circle at P and Q. Sorry about that. But my phone is saying there's a tornado warning. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, yeah, so hopefully there will not be a tornado that knocks down my apartment. Um, but yeah, there's nothing I can do. So MN and PQ meet at R. Um, Whoops, there we go, that looks a little better. So obviously MN is parallel to BC. Um, prove that OA is perpendicular to RA. So, so that's the same as saying RA is tangent to the circle. Um, okay, that's interesting. To intersect the circle. Okay. Uh, hold on just a sec. Uh, PM and QN? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on just a sec. Yeah, so I probably should have drawn the whole line, but it's okay. Let's do that right now. Whoops, B e and E, and I will close this. And I will hide a few things and then I will check the chat. All right. Let 
There we go. All right, let's check the chat. Oh, you saw this problem? Ah, uh, yes. So I think that I had the solution of this problem. Okay. Um, uh, as we can see that um, B and E is the the antipode of um, C and B. A B and C. Yes. B and E is the antipode of B and C, right? Okay. How, how do you, um, let's see, how do you prove that? Um, this is a very common uh, result. Uh, we all know that, um, we all know that the author's the line uh, pass through the author center and a uh, midpoint of a side pass through the antipod. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well known. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. All right. So DBCE so, uh, is a rectangle. Yes, it's a rectangle. And uh, so that uh, DE is parallel uh, with BC. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, so uh, it's a very easy to see that VP and N M are consecutive. Um, M, D, B, M, and N. We are Q, P, N, and M. Okay. So I'm guessing uh, that's that's an easy angle chase, yeah, because Q, N, M is Q, E, D is Q, P, N, yeah. Okay. Yes. And the last thing we have to do is using uh, the ray equation theorem uh, in the three circle um, I, M, N. A, B, C, and uh, M, N, P, Q. Okay, so the other circle is A, M, N? Yes, the radical axis of uh, circle A, M, N, and A, B, C is the tangent. Uh, okay. I, I like that solution. That's really nice. So yeah, hopefully the next problems will be harder, but uh, I'm pretty sure they will be. Um, but that is a, a really cool solution. So... Um, um uh h n uh passes through uh the antipode of uh c um, and so that means that uh c d is a diameter And then similarly, BE is a diameter. Um, so therefore, um, BDEC is a rectangle. And so um, PE is parallel to BC. And then once we know that, um, we can use an angle chase to prove that PQMN is cyclic. So, um, or, or we could just say Rhine's theorem, but basically angle, angle Q uh, PM, I'll, I'll just write the whole thing out. So QPM equals QPD equals QED. Um, QED, uh, which is equal to QNM. And that means that uh, QPNM is cyclic. All right, let me add in um, the details here. So this is a problem in EGMO, you said, uh, Stefan, right? In a one chance book. Okay. So like yeah. Not the competition, the book. Yeah, not the competition, the book. Yeah, the books. I feel like the book is more famous. Um, and then also we know that uh, A, uh, O, M. So yeah, we know A, M, O, N is cyclic because um, Um, angle OMA equals, it's pretty obvious. So, um, 
And then also the circle AMON is tangent to ABC. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Um, so AMON, I'll say, has diameter uh, OA and thus is tangent to the circle ABC. And so by the radical axis theorem on those three circles, um, axis theorem on AMON, ABC, and um, QPMM. Um, uh, we have the tangent at A passes through R. Tangent to ABC at A passes through R. And so that implies that OA is perpendicular to RA. All right, that was fast. So now we can move on to the next one. I'm just gonna draw that tangent line before moving on. All right, it didn't intersect the text, which is kind of nice. All right, so here's the next problem from 2012. So yeah, I feel like the 2016 ones are gonna be harder, but this one, this one still seems a little tricky. So we have a quadrilateral with AC equals BB. Um, let me let me do it like this. So just draw another point and use the compass tool, which is pretty helpful. Okay, so AC uh, equals BD. So I could just let D be any kind of point like that. All right, let me hide the circle. Um, AC and BD meet at P. Oops, this is point P. Um, omega one, and O1 are the circumcircle. Okay, so we want to draw um, ABP and CDP. So this looks a little like a spiral similarity, right? Like if we let these cir circles intersect at a point, um, then uh, triangle ECD is similar to EAB. So I don't know if we're going to end up using that, but um, oh, is E the midpoint of arc of, of the arc? Yeah, so so I think there's a good chance we'll use that fact. And I think it's easy to prove by spiral similarity because because um, yeah, E is going to be the midpoint of arc APB. Okay. Um, segment BC meets uh, the two circles. Okay, so we need to draw the whole line, not just the segment. It meets the circles at S and T. So omega one is, so this is S. And this is T. Um, M and N are the midpoints of arcs SP and PP. Okay, so I'll probably want to draw the perpendicular bisector. Let me see if I have to draw this. Oh, that's nice. I didn't even have to draw the segment. Okay, so this is M. I forgot to draw O1 and O2, but I'll do that in just a second. So this is M and looks, I wonder if these perpendicular bisectors can occur on CD. Um, Whoops, that shouldn't be N, N should be um, PP not including C. 
Okay, yeah, so this is N. And let me draw O1 and O2. So those will lie on those two perpendicular bisectors. So that's O1. And this is O2. And let's see if they let's see if these concur here. Um, no, they don't concur. It just was a coincidence. Okay, so time to hide a bunch of stuff. And I'll have to redraw these. All right, looks like that is just joining us. Um, so I'm gonna wanna draw this, uh, is, is that right? Yeah, and what else am I forgetting here? At point N, um, maybe that's everything I need. I think it might be. Uh, let's see. So does this circle always pass through O1? Um, no, it doesn't. So I don't want to make it look like that. Let me, uh, there we go. I kind of like that better. Uh, they don't seem parallel. Uh, M, N, yeah. <laughs> Looks like they're, hmm. What did I do wrong here? Let's see. A, B, C, A, C equals B, B. Uh, A, C, oh, because a, C, and B, D have to be the diagonals. That's my problem. So the diagonals are equal. I got to redraw this whole problem. Whoops. I made it so the sides are equal. Oh, well. All right. So, so A, C equals B, D. Um, but, but it looked kind of like those were, maybe they were perpendicular in that configuration. Like instead of being parallel, maybe the fact that they were sides instead of the diagonals uh, made it perpendicular. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you guys hear the rain behind me. Um, I'm not sure what I can do about it. Um, let's see. So where is the compass tool? Here's the compass. Okay. Ah. So we could let that be B. Um, it okay. also said segment BC, so mm, no, like segment, that is important also. Or, or what did you say about segment BC? Well, uh, the segment BC intersect the circles. Oh, it has, to inter it has to intersect the circles? Yes, yes. Okay. Not the line, that segment. All right, hold on just a sec. Let me um, keep drawing. So this will be point P. Um, so we want to draw the circumcircle of uh, ABP and CDP. Okay, segment BC. Yeah, so that's what you're saying. Segment BC has to meet both circles. Um, so, hmm. Is there a way, is there really a way to do that? It's hard, it's hard to get BC to intersect both circles. Um, make BC longer. Okay. Um, but BC, 
Oops, it's really rainy here. Okay, so, oh, what just happened here? Um, yeah. You know, let me let me try this. I'm gonna make A B really. Sh no, I don't want to do that. Okay, I can make it intersect one circle, but I'm having trouble making it intersect the other. It almost seems. Because. Okay, basically, I think I want both of these angles to be acute. Well, no. Oh, what if I make, yeah, there we go. I need to make it really tall. Yeah, you were right about making it longer. I just had to do it a little differently. Okay, so, um, all right. So it, it meets the circles at S and T. I feel like I made that harder than it had to be, but I figured it out. Um, okay, S and T, and then we draw the centers of the circles, O1 and O2. Um, and then we take the midpoints of arcs SP and TP. All right. This is the perpendicular bisector. Uh, they're so close in this diagram. Let me uh, let me try to fix it. Maybe something like I don't know. Let's see if I can do better. I think that's okay. So, uh, this should be M and this should be N. Yeah, they're so close together. Maybe I could um, keep playing around with it. Okay, but now MN looks parallel to O and O2. Let's see, can I make them farther apart? There we go, I think that's fine. So can we still do anything with like, you know how we found before, like is E the midpoint of arc APB and CPB? I think it probably is, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, is P is, if we draw the perpendicular bisector of PE, is it 01? Yeah, it's 0102. So, um, I mean, really, we just want to show that MN is perpendicular to PE, right? That would be good enough. Um, we don't even really need to draw that. So, okay. So, N is the midpoint, M is the midpoint of SP. And N is the midpoint of PP. Interesting. So yeah, how do we show NM is perpendicular to PE? Uh, can we do an angle? Mm. We should use the length condition. 
Yeah, so, so somewhere you said AC equals BD, right? Yeah, so maybe Pythagoras. Pythagoras? So like, like PN squared minus EN squared is PM squared minus EM yeah. squared? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and PM is equal to MS. I don't know if that... Um, so... Yeah, it's going to be raining probably the whole session. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to see we how can, we can. We can use. Hi, uh, Ptolemy. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Oh, Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like the P is silent. There's no P. It's just Ptolemy. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, in uh, for the quadrature, there's D, P, and C, and A, P, uh, M, S. APMS? Yeah. Okay, so APMS and um, DPNT? DPNC, yeah. A T, T, I'm, I'm sorry. DTNP. Okay, yeah. so, so if we use Ptolemy on APMS, um, AM times PS, Okay, because we know PM is equal to MS. So we have AP plus PS um, times PM uh, is equal to AM times PS. But how would we get AM and PS? That seems a little tricky. So th th these, these are the two you were thinking of, right? Yes, I'm just thinking. You're just thinking, yeah. It's an interesting idea. Hmm. Back uh, okay. Can you call the reflection of N over line one E? N over O one E. Yeah. Uh, sure. Hold on a sec. Let me draw the segment. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, three M. O M. Okay. Let me make it a little nicer. Um, there we go. So are M prime P and N collinear or something? No. Okay, so we have two midpoint of two different arcs. So yeah, we want to try to take advantage of that. So 
I guess if we could extend BM and CM to meet at a point, and that would be the in center. And then I wonder if PE, uh, what's the angle bisector of CPB? Let me check. Um, yeah, I think PE bisects that angle. And so these three, I think, are concurrent. Let me, let me check that. Is that actually true? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's draw the in center of, um, of CPB. So All right, so we have, we have it like that. I don't know if that helps. So we, we want to show that PE is perpendicular to MN. Um, let's think about that. So we can almost get rid of uh, PE. Um, my, my call, if you could um, prove that uh, PE uh, Cross over the center of the circumcircle of FCB, that will solve the problem. Ah, interesting. Okay, so I draw the circumcircle of FCB. Yeah. All right. I'm going to delete this for a second. All right, interesting. And that should be obvious. Oh, really? Because F is the, the uh, uh, if F the in circle, in circle, right? The in center. So, so G will belong to the second circle of B, C, B. Uh, right? Okay, so um, like you're saying, Sorry, yeah, hold on a sec. Okay, okay. Could you draw um, the symptoms of BCB? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. because of in-center extensor lemma, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, PA will cross cross over G, and that will solve the problem. Oh, okay. Because by the in-center extensor lemma... Yeah. Um, uh, you, you. <laughs> okay, so what... How, how, so, so once we know all that, like, um, like we know P, once we know PE passes through G, um, how does that show that MN uh, is Okay, perfect? so, so MN, G, MN, C, B is cyclic because uh, FN times FC is equal to FE times FB is equal to FN times FB. Oh, okay. So they are cyclic, yeah. And if um, PA, uh, uh, EF cross over the center of uh, FBC, so EF will particular to uh, MN. Oh, interesting. All right. So let me write that out. But one thing is left to show. Is that right? Uh, how do we prove that E is the midpoint of the arc? Oh, okay. So, so from the spiral similarity, so triangle ECA is similar to triangle uh, EDB and AC is equal to BD. So ED is equal to EA, uh, ED will equal to EC and EA will equal to uh, EB. All right. Okay. So, 
Okay, so first I'm gonna start. So basically by spiral similarity, uh, we have triangle, um, actually I'm gonna say triangle EDC is similar to EAB. So, um, whoops, sorry. So e, EDC is similar to EAB. Um, And, and so then we have angle CPE uh, is CPB is uh, EAB is EPB. So CPE is CDE. Um, which is EAB, which is EPB. All right. Um, I think that's probably equivalent to what um, Dat was saying. And then, um, so so e, so P, E, B, M, and C, N intersect at the in-center F of C, P, B. P, E, P, E, C, N, and B, M. <laughs> All right. All right. And um so the circumcircle, uh, so by the in center x center lemma, um, PE, um, I, I mean, we know PE passes through um, G, which is the x center. And, okay, so I'll just say, So let um, G uh, be the X center of um, triangle CPB. And then by the in center X center lemma, PE passes through G and uh, PCGB is cyclic. No, 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 no. Uh, G is not the uh, X in the micro. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, G is just the midpoint of that arc, yeah. Okay, let G be, um, I, I could just say let PF intersect that circle yeah. at G. Okay, yeah, yeah. just let um, BF uh, intersect circle at G. Um, and then by the in-center, x-center lemma, um, so G, G is the center of the circle uh, BFC. and PE passes through G. Well, well we kind of define for PF. Wait, P, yeah. So let me, um, whoops, G, and, and, and PC, 
GB is cyclic. So I'll add that and let me check the chat. Cyclic. All right. Make BC longer. Uh oh, sorry. Why is F the end center? Oh, I defined F to be the end center. So BM is an angle bisector of PBS, since M is the midpoint of RPS, and same with CN. And PE is the bisector of CPB, and I proved that up here. So then I, so they all concur at the, the end sector. Um, okay, so once we know that, um, now we could show MN is perpendicular to PE. I think that's an angle chase because MN is anti-parallel to uh, BC. So let me think about this. Yeah, yeah. Um, because um, MN is an anti-parallel, just a draw the circle. I uh, you, you can imagine the, the triangle ABC with uh, the uh, circum center of the circum circle O and the ortho center H and uh, EF is the uh, attitude from B and C. So EF will perpendicular to AO. Okay, did you say draw the circum circle of ABC? No, 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 no. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, just use the angle chase. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, or, uh, or we can directly use the lemma that says MN is uh, parallel to the X center of B and the X center of B. The X center of um, oh oh because oh I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Oh, sorry, you're no. mute. Sorry. You, you can just use the angle J, Michael. Okay. So uh, if you uh, draw the tension from F of the circle uh, F, B, C. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that, that will be perpendicular to F, G, right? So we need uh, that line up, um, parallel to MN. Okay. So could, could you pick a point on the tangent? So yeah, any point, yeah. So uh, so angle H, F, C, right? Is equal yeah. to an angle uh, F, B, C, and that will equal to F, N, M. Okay, so yeah, then, I like that. Okay, sounds good. So um, I'm just going to draw FH. Um, okay. Okay, so I'll just say let H be any point on the tangent. to um, FBC at F. And then um, we have F angle uh, HFC equals FBC. So yeah, first I have to prove um, so, 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 so yeah, first I'm gonna use the, the power of a point like you said. So Fn times Fc is Fe times Fp. Which is Fm times Fb. So Mn, um, B, Mn Cb is cyclic.
And then we have, let's just move this a teeny bit. There we go. And so now it's just an angle chase. So H, F, um, C is equal to um, F, B, C. which is equal to um, uh, FNM. So, so MN is uh, parallel to FH and um, which is um, perpendicular to FG. And that means that MN uh, is parallel to O one O two. And that's because F, um, since PE, since O one O two is the perpendicular bisector of PE. All right, very nice. So I'll move on to the next problem. This is a fun one. Uh, okay, Melek said BMCN and BCI, um, they're, they're cyclic. So, okay, so yeah, rhymes here. And we could have we just said like, um, X centers of B and C. Yeah, what we could have just used uh, use Rhine's theorem. So that's another way to do it. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, I will move on to the next one. Okay, so this is from 2016. Um, so we have a triangle with ortho center H and circumcenter O. First draw circumcircle. Make it a nicer triangle. Okay. So O is going to be the center of C, and H is the ortho center. And M and N are the midpoints of AH and BC. So we already have a lot of information here. So I'm gonna, uh, this geodera is so finicky. You just touch something very slightly. Okay, so M is the midpoint of AH. N is the midpoint of BC. And we draw the circle with diameter AH. Um, it's going to pass through the feet of the altitudes. So I might as well draw the altitudes. I, I, actually, this is kind of OCD, but I want B to be the altitude from B. And I want E to be the altitude from C. And so it meets the circle at a point G. And it meets A N at Q. And then the tangent to it at G. Um, meets O M at P. All right. So the tangent to the little circle. 
meets OM at P. And Oops, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna hide this, hide this. I wanna draw OMP and GP. And it uh, looks like these might concur. Let's see if that's actually true. I'm not 100% sure. No, they don't. They yeah, do not. Um, so we want to show the circumcircles of G and Q and M, B, C. It's kind of random. Intersect on P, N. So is there anything special about that point? Let's see. So. I don't know if we want to let one circle intersect it at a point and then show the other also lies on it. So GNQ and MBC. And yeah, it looks like they do concur at that point. So. Um, point O isn't really that important because uh, PA uh, is actually tangent to the gamma. Ah, okay, so PA is tangent to gamma um, because um, by symmetry, yeah. So really we can just draw the tangents at um, A and G and let them intersect at P, yeah. Interesting, okay. So yeah, O, o is not that important. Um, I'm just gonna leave it there, I guess, but I see what you're saying, that's true. It seems like we can use poles and polars. Yeah, because AG would be the polar of P. Um, we can intersect AG with BC maybe. All right. And I wonder if they meet on one of those circles. Like I wonder if, um, yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so what if, let me hide, uh, hide those two. So we wanna show F, G, maybe I could hide this circle and then I wanna show F, G, Q, N, -S I'm sorry, go on. I I think D, E, F are also collinear. Uh, D, E, and F, all right. Yeah. Um, also. Uh, because it's the polar of N with respect to uh, the circle A, E, D. So, oh, the polar of N, yeah, because N, E, and N, D are tangents. Yeah. I like it. Um, a labeled uh, intersection point of uh, circles. Um, of, uh, uh, yeah, so that is a point T. Well, uh, then MT uh, should also pass through F. Okay. Um, so, so this point right here, right? Or I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. MT um, would also pass through F if the problem is true. Um, I don't know if it is sufficient, but uh, it is like something that looks true. Okay. Is it quite trivial? You can use the uh, antipolar of uh, F, of point F. Uh, we can see that line PN is uh, antipolar, uh, antipolar of F with respect to the uh, circle AED. Okay. So if we draw the polar of F, um, where's the polar? I know they have like a polar tool. It's gonna be PN. It's gonna be PN, because those both lie on the, okay. 
by Lahir's theorem? Because f lies on the polar of p and f also lies on the polar of n. So yeah, pn, that's a good point. So pn is the polar of f. So we know pm is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, fm is per perpendicular to pn. Okay. And, and, and um, so fm is perpendicular to pn. And maybe if we could show angle F, T, N is, is 90, then that would mean those three would have to be collinear. Okay. Also, there are a lot of secret quadrilaterals. Very well. Yeah. Because uh, that point T lies on Euler's circle of A, B, C, and lies on uh, P, A, M, G, and like T, M, H, Q, and like every circle passes through. There's a lot, a lot of cyclic quadrilaterals, basically. So yeah, it looks like yeah, T and M both lie on the nine-point circle for the Euler circle. All right, we just have to figure out what order to prove things in. Um, but yeah, this looks like a really rich, like a diagram with a lot of stuff in it. I offer the order of the result. You can call the intersection of um, PN and uh, MF first, and uh, root that T uh, also lies on the support MBC. And you can see this very easy if we are uh, processing. Okay, say that one more time. Sorry, I didn't hear you that well. So, first, we, uh, we need, need to work. Uh, Call the intersection of uh, FM and uh, PN. So uh, uh, FM and PN, and uh, we we have just proved that um, FM uh, is perpendicular to PN FT, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, and uh, but, but we don't know yet that T lies on on um, the circle, right? Yes, and uh, we also see that T, T is like on circle D, E, N, right? As a nine point circle, right? Um, is that, oh, because we know angle M, T, N is, is a right angle. And so that kind of proves that, that, that it lies on the nine point circle, right? Yes, and so that uh, F, T times F, M is equal to uh, F E times F B equal to F B times F C. So uh, C lie on this for uh, M B C. So we have finished uh, problem. Oh wait, so 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 you show that T lies on the circumcircle of M B C. Yes. Because because um, and use power of a point because F T times F M uh, is F B times F E. Is that how you did it? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Which is, okay. So, okay. All right. So I think we have most of the main ideas. So, okay. So step one, uh, we want to show that AG, uh, DE, and BC concur. Uh, that's pretty well known, I think. Um, I think that's just the radical axis theorem, right? Um, because... Yeah, that's just the radical axis theorem. So, all right. So, I'll say by the uh, radical axis theorem on ADEG, um, BCDE, and ABC. Um, we have um, B, C, D, E, and A, G concur at a point F. F. And then F lies on the polar of P, um, 
So, and it also lies in the polar of n. So, okay. So first, um, by symmetry, PA is tangent to gamma. And that means that F lies on the polar of P. with respect to gamma. And then it's, it's well known that any e and NB are tangent to gamma. That's an easy angle chase. And that um, implies F uh, lies on the polar of N with respect to gamma. And so therefore, uh, by the Heeres theorem, PN is the polar of F. F with respect to uh, gamma. Um, and that implies um, Pn is perpendicular to Fm. And then let Pn intersect um, Fm at T. T prime. Should or be. T prime, yeah. Uh, that didn't work. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Um, all right, let uh, PN intersect FM at T prime. Um, first, we show T prime lies on the nine point circle. So we have, since angle MTN um, is equal to, uh, yeah, let, let me draw this segment right here. So uh, I'll, I'll just call it J, I don't like the I. So let, let J be the foot of the altitude from A. All right, so we have um, angle MT prime N is 90, which is MJN. So so that means that um, T prime lies on the nine point circle of uh, ABC and then once we know that we have FT prime times FM is FA times FG or FG times FA which is FB times FC so And that means that BC, uh, BCMT prime is cyclic. All right. And so, okay, so, okay, so, so T prime, okay, so now we want to show that uh, G N Q T prime is cyclic, right? But they're already cyclic because uh, uh, F N is the diameter of this circle, and uh, F T N is ninety degrees. F T prime N is ninety. 
Okay, so so f t prime n equals f uh, g n equals f q n equals ninety. So so f h and q are also collinear. Um, so yeah, that is the h m point. Q is the h m point. Yeah. So and... so f h and q are collinear, um, and f h. So, so yeah, I did this in a previous video, but it's and it's also pretty well known. Yeah, but f, uh, h, and n are collinear, and um, f h is perpendicular to a n. F h and q, you wrote m instead of q. Oh. But a n and q are collinear, so um, f h and q. Oh, that q. Sorry, I was thinking that the. My bad. Um, so yeah, so so basically, f f q n is f t prime n is f g n, and they're all ninety. So so I mean, we're also using that like g h and n are collinear. Right, which is also well known, but um, so I'll say G H and N are uh, collinear. That's well known. So we have um, angle FGN equals angle FT prime N equals angle uh, FQN equals 90. So that means that um, T prime uh, GNQ T prime See G N Q uh, T prime is cyclic. And then so T prime equals T is the point in the problem. So I'll just say T prime equals T is the intersection of um, G and Q and MBC and lies on PM. All right. It's a lot of uh, a very sophisticated diagram. Um, So I'm gonna move on to the next one. We're only like an hour in, so hopefully they'll get harder. Um, this one, may, yeah, hopefully the last will be harder because they're like later years. So we have a triangle um, inscribed in a circle. All right. And then the angle bisector A, uh, we see where it meets uh, BC in the circle. So it meets BC at um, D and it meets the circle at L. And M is the midpoint of BC. Uh, then we draw the circumcircle of ADM. And we see where it intersects sides A, B, and AC, uh, Q and P. So it intersects A, B at, P, at Q and AC at P.
and n is the midpoint of pq. So maybe it's worth drawing the center of that circle. So that's n. And I'm just going to draw the, the center of the circle just because maybe it would be helpful. Um, so E is the center of that circle. Maybe like that. Um, H is the foot of the perpendicular from L to NB. So E, N, and D. Is D the midpoint of our PQ? It looks like it's true. Um, yeah, because it's angle bisector. Okay. So yeah, because the angle bisector. So yeah, th this passes through, I think F is the midpoint of arc BAC. And yeah, that is true. Because, well, you can angle chase or do PowerPoint. There are okay. multiple ways to show that, but it is not hard to see. So then, uh, yeah, G is point. just this point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this problem is almost like too easy. Okay. Um, we might solve this one pretty quickly. Um, and we know that these are collinear. Prove that ML is tangent to the circumcircle of HMN. Uh, what is H? H is, oh, this should be H right here. Um, all right, Vance just joined us. Yeah, I thought 2012 wasn't that long ago. So I thought the USA, I thought this, this test would be harder, but let's see. Um, so HMN, okay. All right, so we have a diagram like this. So we basically need to show the center of HMN lies on BC. The center of HMN lies on BC. Yeah. Let's see if that circle passes through some other point. So, well, we, we can calculate like. Uh, my, my, my call, my call. Mm -hmm. Could you prove that uh, FD is the midpoint of uh, arc, uh, QAP? Uh, can I prove that F is the midpoint of our QAP? Yeah. Uh, I think that's true because AD is an angle bisector, so arc DQ is equal to arc DP. So, so, so it will be easy to see that uh, uh, triangle QFP is similar to PFC, right? Uh, QFP BFC, yeah. Yeah. So N N is the midpoint of PQ, M is the midpoint of uh, BC, uh, D is the midpoint of arc uh, QB, uh, A is the midpoint of arc BC. So um, so so NF over ND will be equal to MF over L uh, ML, right? Because um, five point uh, F Q D A F Q D N P is similar to F B L M C. Mm -hmm. So 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 M N is uh, will parallel to uh, D L. So 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 M N M N is parallel to D L. Yeah, I think there might be a simpler way to write this up. So all we have to do is show that F M squared is F D times F H, but um. Did oh, I'm we sorry, prove FN that FN. NM, uh, did we prove that NM is uh, parallel to DL? Um, yes. That, ju that just proved it. 
All right, that is uh, that is actually un uh, enough. Enough to solve it. Yes. Yeah, uh, because uh, if um, M and parallel to DM, so angle uh, NMF will be equal to DLF, and that will equal to DHM. Okay. I think I think I, I so I think it, I think we might not even need parallel lines. So so F N times F H. What if I write it like this? F N times F H is equal to uh, F N times F D times F H over F D, and then. Um, and then Fn times Fd is, uh, oh, I would need, it would be like Fp squared and Fh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we do need the parallel lines. So we know that Fm times Fl is Fd times Fh, right? Um, but well, actually, let, let me write it like this. So, um, Sorry. So FH times FD over FD squared, which um, is equal to, um, so FN times FD is, so that's FM squared times F, um, Oh no, that would be F, FP squared times FM times FL over FD squared. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we have FLD equals FPQ equals FMN by the gliding principle. Okay, so F, FLD equals, equals FBQ. Okay, FBQ. Uh, and uh, we know that FBQ and FCP uh, are the similar triangles. So by the gliding principle, FM and N are also the similar. FMN is similar to FBQ and FCP. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so that probably proves that MN is parallel to AD. Um, and the parallel isn't really important. Uh, it's just an angle chase. Okay. So, okay. So, so yeah, I, I think that's all we need. Because once we know FMN is similar to FBQ and FCP, then we know that angle FMN um, is, like, we want to show that's angle N. HM, right? But it's the same as angle. So, so, so I'm sorry. So once we know that FMN is similar to um, FBQ, um, then like, like once we know that, how, do, how, do, how, does, how do we finish the problem? Um, well, firstly, we see that uh, HLMD is cyclic. Mm -hmm. and that is because of the 90 angles. Yeah, the right angles. So uh, we do an angle chase. Uh, QBF, mm -hmm. that is equal, equal to ABF, mm -hmm. and that is equal to ALF. Okay. And that is equal to DLM. All right. Uh, DHM. That is equal to DHM because of the cyclic quadrilateral. But uh, because of the similar triangles, we have that DHM is in the end equal to NMF. Uh, NMF. Um. Okay, so since DHM is NMF, okay, so so so, so I think I got this. So, um, okay, so actually, 
did we even need similar triangles? Because what you just said, you just said, um, oh yeah, because QBF is 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 going to be NMF. So okay, so let me write this out. So NMF is QBF. Sorry, I I think that we haven't proved that um, F is the uh, midpoint of the major BC. Um, but 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 I think it's so 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 oh, yeah I think you're right. But um, I'm gonna get to that. So yeah, but thanks for pointing it out. So NMF is is QBF, um, which is ABF, ABF which is ALF, which is uh, uh, ELM, which is uh, DHM. I think this is the main angle chase. Sorry, I'm gonna break it up into two lines. Okay, so we're gonna prove, um, let's see if this works. So since since NMF is uh, is NHM, then that would prove the tangency. Okay, so let's go back to um, what and when was just saying. Um, um, let, let me uh, finish the first part of the problem. Uh, we need to prove that F is a uh, midpoint of the major arc, you see, right? Okay. So um, by using the uh, spiral similarity, we need to prove that BQ is equal to CP. Uh, uh, similar to uh, the problem uh, uh, before. Before, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, by using the uh, power of B and C, we have BD times BM is equal to uh, BQ times BA. And, uh, CM times CD is equal to CP times CA. And uh, we have BD times BA is equal to CD times CA. Uh, sorry, BD over BA is equal to uh, CD over CA. So uh, BQ is, is equal to CP. So, okay, so then BQ is equal to CP. And then by spiral similarities, um, Basically, that means F is the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, because basically, that means that triangle FQB is congruent to FPC. Well, let me think about that. Um, by angle side angle, I think, right? So, um, yeah, okay. So let me let me write that up. So first, first I'm gonna show um, so let the two circles intersect at F. Sorry, I, I, usually, I just like putting the proof on this side. Um, yeah, Dad, I think, so, sorry, I kind of skipped over your way. I, I apologize for that. Um, I probably should have written it out a little bit more. Um, uh, okay, no, no, uh, it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you could uh, solve the... Um the problem uh, in any way. Yeah, there, there's a couple different ways to think about. So yeah. let F be the intersection of um, APQ and ABC. Um, so first we can show that F is the midpoint of arc BAC. Uh, we know it's the midpoint of arc AQP, right? Because because AD um is an angle bisector but it doesn't i guess it doesn't i guess you have to do the all the ratios to show it's also well but wait we we know so we know triangle fqp is similar to triangle fbc right so i, I think it might be a little easier than that right because fqp is similar to fbc by a spiral similarity and we know fqp is is isosceles because AD is an angle bisector, right? So I don't even think we need to use the angle bisector theorem, right? So let, let, let me know if I'm wrong about that. But um, by a spiral similarity at F, 
um, triangle FQP is similar to triangle FBC. Um, but then FQP we know is isosceles um, because um, D is the midpoint of RQP. So I'll say since AD is an angle bisector, um, that means D is the midpoint of arc um, uh, QDP. Right, so, so F, F is the midpoint of our QAP. Um, well, oh wait, yeah, it depends how we define F. Yeah, okay, m m maybe we do need to use the angle bisector theorem. What do you guys think? Is there a way around it or? Oh, sorry, uh, why, um, why AD is a uh, angle bicycle of um, QAP, you, why can you show that F is a midpoint of a uh, arc QP? Yeah, the, no, that's the problem, because I kind of just assume these are all collinear, but we don't know that, right? So, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Like, I do need to use the angle bisector theorem, right? Um, Okay, so I'm going to use the angle bisector theorem here. Um, so, yeah, because we don't know that these are all collinear until we know that, right? So first, yeah, let me use the angle bisector theorem. Um, so, So first we're going to show that BQ is equal to CP. Um, and so we have uh, BQ times BA uh, is equal to BD times BM. And CP times CA is equal to CD times CM. And um, we have AB over AD equals AC over AD. And uh, BM equals CM. Uh, and that implies that BQ equals CP. Then and then once we know BQ equals CP, then triangle FQB is similar to FPC by by angle side angle similarity. So so we have um, FBQ is congruent to um, triangle. FCP by um, angle side angle congruence. And that implies um, FB equals FC. And then once we know that, um, then uh, we can use the gliding principle. So, um, so by the gliding principle on those two triangles. Triangle FMN and triangle FBQ. I'm sorry, FBQ, I should say F, F CP. All right, I see the chat. Someone has written something. So, and then we get this angle chase. So, um, 
So, so this basically implies that F, N, and B are collinear. Um, well, actually, so we know F is the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, so, yeah, F. Okay, so wait, we kind of always knew F. Um, hmm, now I'm confused. Okay, so so th so this means that FQ equals FP. Okay, I, I think I got it. So this means that FQ equals FP, which means that F, N, and B are collinear. And then let F D meet the circle at H prime, then it's easy to see H prime equals H. Um, or, or actually I'll just say F L is a diameter implies F D passes through H. I think that's good enough. So I think this solves everything. Um, so ML is tangent to HMN. All right, let me check the chat. Sorry. Oh yeah, HDF is collinear, yeah. So yeah, you read my mind uh, when I put this, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. Um, we're only, it's only 10.30 and we've got through, we're on the fifth problem, so. Yeah, if we solve this one quickly.